once change becomes transfer, that's when we experience our greatest blessings. At the beginning of the year, we see a lot of changes. First of all, it's a new year, but we change our diet. You know, we start going to the gym, working out. Even in school, there's a new semester that starts at the beginning of the year. And in the midst of all those changes, the goal is to establish a better quality of life. But in the midst of all of these changes this year, the word that kept jumping out at me was transfer, transfer, transfer. I couldn't shake it. So I began to research the scriptures. Now, when we speak of seeking our best lives, I have to go back to the creation once again, because God, who is the master of the universe, he is also a master of order of operations. He didn't create the birds before he created the sky. He didn't create the fish before he created water. So when you think about it, the last piece of creation was us, people. He placed everything that we could ever imagine, dream of, think, or need in life. He already pray, placed it, provided us with it before we were even born. So it's not so much of, of us going and doing and changing these things in order to get what we want. It's a matter of transferring the provision that God has already provided for us at creation into our lives. So how do we go about that? I want to go to the book of Joshua. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Here we see the transfer of the promised land to Abraham's descendants from the promise that God had made to Abraham so many centuries prior. Now, before we talk about this transfer a little bit deeper, I want to go back and review and contrast transfer and change because Abraham's grandson, Jacob, who is Israel, Jacob lived in Canaan, but there was a famine. There was no food in Canaan. So Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to buy food. But when they got to Egypt, they found their brother, Joseph, who they sold into slavery and told their father, Jacob, that Joseph was dead. But Joseph was living in Egypt as a governor over the world's food supply because of the dream that God gave Joseph. Egypt was the only place in the region that had food. So he was in charge of dispersing the food. So what Joseph did at that point was he had them go back and he moved his entire family to Egypt. The change. They changed from being in Canaan where there was no food to moving to Egypt where God provided a place for them. He provided refuge and they were there and they were living well. But then it says that there was a Pharaoh that rose up that did not remember Joseph. And now he's looking at these foreigners that's living in their land and they are multiplying just exponentially. Why? Because it was part of the promise to Abraham that his seed would be so great. It would be like the sands in the, in the ground and the, the sands by the sea. And it would also be like the stars in the sky and it would be so many of them. So they started multiplying. This is a lesson right here. They started multiplying and and started to manifest the promise of God while they were yet in bondage. It was so many of them. So they decided to put them into bondage and make them slaves a change. So now you're here, you know, you got Joseph and he's looking out for you. Joseph is dead. Time goes by. Pharaoh forgets Joseph. Now you're at the bottom of the totem pole. You're at the bottom of the food chain and you are slaves in a foreign land. So now God had to raise up Moses, right? And Moses delivered the people out of Egypt by the power of God, another change. So now you go from being slaves in Egypt and now we're wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. But while they were there, God made sure they ate every day and he took care of them and he made sure that they had everything that they need. Another lesson, God will even provide for you through your wilderness experience because he is so faithful. So now we have them in the wilderness. That was another change. And so now here we go. We come to the Jordan River. The Jordan River is the geographical natural boundary that God promised to Abraham for the land that he had given them. Once they crossed over Jordan, they were in the promised land that God had given them. And one of the first cities, once they crossed over Jordan was Jericho. 
Now, it says Jericho was shut up tight because they had heard about the children of Israel. They knew they were coming. So they thought they could fortify themselves, right? They're going to be behind this wall and they're safe and they're good. The Israelites couldn't do anything with them because they were safe. See, sometimes your enemy, you think that they're attacking you because they don't think anything of you. Just the opposite. They heard of you. They know how powerful you are. They see what God has placed in you. So now they got to make sure that, that you can't get to them. So now they walled up the city and the city was shut up tight. And God told Joshua to march around this city one time a day for six days. On the seventh day, I need you to march around that city seven times on the seventh day and blow the trumpet and, and make the shout. And the walls of that city fell down. And that is so critical because now that's part of the transfer. See, sometimes in order to get to that transfer that we are looking for, we have to make sure that we are following God's directions. God was so specific in the direction, the directions that he gave to Joshua, and they followed God's directions to the team. They didn't go in trying to fight Jericho. See, sometimes we're trying to protect our reputation. We're trying to tell our side of the story. We're trying to fight our battles. God didn't tell us to do any of that. He said to follow his directions. If you want the transfer of God's blessings in your life, you've got to do what God told you to do in spite of of what anyone else around you says or does what they do to you what they say about you it is a non-factor because what god has for you is for you and he will transfer it to you god is a covenant keeping god and while you're setting your goals for 2024 and you're making all of these things make your number one priority to establish and maintain your covenant with God because that is how the blessings are going to be transferred into your life. Focus on God and see, you know, we have this um digital banking right now, right? And, you know, I, I'm notorious for not answering the phone or I might text you back three, four days, maybe a week later. I'm notorious for that. So I could be sitting there. My phone is chiming, doom, you know, the little text message sound. I don't even flinch. I'll just leave it over there. Or the little vibration that happens when I get an email. Yeah, I check it when I get ready. But there's a certain sound, right, that my phone makes when I got a transfer. That little cha-ching sound that my phones make when I hear that sound. I pick up my phone because I know I got some money. I know I got something happening. I know there has been a transfer of what I want into my possession. And that's what we want to do in 2024. We want to transfer and we want to possess. And that requires covenant. And when you look at this, they came into a land that was inhabited. This wasn't just no land that was laying there dormant that God said, okay, ain't nobody over there using that so you can have that. No, this land was a flourishing land. These people were working. They were living well in this land, but God took the land from them because of sin. That struck me because we're living in an age now where anything goes. People just doing whatever they want. They don't care what they say. They don't care what they do. You can't believe nothing they say. It's just a terrible time that we're living in. And the bad thing about it is that it looks like they're winning, right? That, you know, you sitting here, you trying to live right. You're trying to do right. You're trying to tell the truth. You're trying to treat people right. And you're suffering. You're struggling. And these people out there doing any and everything. And they buying property. They're buying vehicles. They're starting businesses. They're thriving. They're making millions. And it looks like they're winning. But you can't focus on that. You've got to focus on your covenant with God. Because here's what God has shown me. They're not winning. They're just holding on to the promise that God has for me until it's time for God to transfer to me. That's what we have to realize. The transfer is here. Keep trusting God. Keep loving God. Keep obeying God. Keep your covenant with God and hold on to faith for the transfer. Abraham is known as the father of the faithful. You want to know why? The promises that God made to Abraham he didn't live anywhere near the time that those promises came into fruition. Yet, every time God told him to move, he got up and he followed God as if he saw the promise right then that day. Those promises did not manifest for hundreds of years after he died, but he trusted God. He believed God, and that's what we've got to do. It doesn't matter what the world looks like today. It doesn't matter what people are saying is acceptable today. 
it doesn't matter what people are willing to do to get what they want today. And I've even said this before, at this point in my life, I'm proud of the things I wasn't willing to do to get what I want at this point. Because at the end of the day, I know, I know that if I trust God and if I stand on his word and if I obey him, obey him my transfer is coming. 2024 is that year I want that big cha-ching sound in my life. You know, when when um uh the prophet said, I hear the sound of abundance rain after the drought ended. That's the sound I want to hear all through 2024 because it is time. And I want this word, it was would not leave me. And, and I'm in the middle of, you know, it's the beginning of the year. I'm launching new programs, all of these things that's going to make money that I can sell. And I'm trying to work on that and I'm trying to do my work. And I could not get this word transfer, transfer, transfer. I'm like, but God, I'm working on this. I got this program. I got these goals. I want to buy this. I want to buy this in the spring. I don't want to buy this in the, in the, in the fall. And by the end of the year, I want to have X amount of dollars, X amount of dollars in my account. God kept saying transfer, 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 transfer. And I'm saying to you, the transfer is on its way. You know, there are some things I, I use Shopify for a lot of my transactions and when somebody buys something in from Shopify, it takes maybe two, but one to two or maybe three sometimes business days for it to get there. But it doesn't matter. The minute I see that they made the purchase, I'm good because I know it's coming. And I want to assure you today it's coming. OK, it's coming. Hold on to your faith. Don't give up. Don't let go. Trust God because the transfer is coming.